Now to move on to another function of Photoshop, you must learn to become proficient, and that's layers and masks. Now, don't be intimidated. It's actually very easy. In fact, I remember when I was first using Photoshop, I avoided learning layers and masks because it sounded complicated. But once I jumped in to learn it, I was amazed at how simple it actually was. And I hope you'll have the same experience now. So let's dive in. What I'm going to do is come up and go to File, New, and just like we did in the previous lesson, we're going to establish a blank workspace. And over here, I'm going to direct your attention to this layers panel right here, which is where all the uh, fun stuff happens. And we've got one layer. Now it's called background because it's the central layer. Now anytime you do work on an image, you don't want to do that work on a background layer. You want to do it on a copy layer. So in order to have a copy layer, Command J, and I'm going to do it twice because I need two copy layers. But if you also wanted to, say, take this layer and drag it down onto this little icon right here, second one from the right, then you can make a copy layer that way too. It's a little bit more cumbersome, but you can do it that way if you want to. I prefer to do simply the uh, keyboard shortcut. All right, so now we have two layers we're gonna concern ourselves with. Again, the background layer is, um, I don't know how to explain the background layer. It's when you put an image in, when you put a picture in, you're not gonna wanna do anything to that background layer because if you ever have to go back and start over, uh, then you want a, a place to do that in the background layer is where you go back and start all over again. So we're just gonna ignore the background layer and do our work on these top two right here. All right, so if I click on this layer, this is the one we see in the workspace. Now, if I click on this layer, this is the active layer, but it's not the one we're seeing. Let me demonstrate that for you. I know it's a little bit confusing. Layer one is the visible layer in the workspace right here. What I'm gonna do is go and get the paint bucket and we have yellow in there and I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna deposit a solid yellow color on this top layer. Now look at these little eyeballs over here on the left hand side. If I uncheck those eyeballs, the next layer down is revealed. Now if I click on that layer, that's the active layer, that's the layer that's gonna respond in the workspace. Let's go get another color, and let's just call it blue, click OK. Now I've got the paint bucket, I'm gonna click on it and deposit a blue color on layer number one. So I'm gonna reactivate the top layer. Now, in order to fully understand layers, envision a stack of plates. And you can see the stack, but the only plate you can really see clearly is the top one, and it's the same concept. Of course here, now you can see that you're seeing the yellow color, which is the same color as the top layer. If I then deactivate the top layer, or in the analogy of the stack of plates, if I remove the top plate, then I can see the plate underneath it, which is the same concept with the layers. So here we have blue on the middle, yellow on the top. Now, let's say, just for the sake of conversation, that I wanna include parts of the blue layer into the top layer. Well, let me demonstrate that for you. I'm gonna come over here and get the eraser tool. Now, I only use the eraser tool when demonstrating layers, okay? I never use it in mainstream image processing, and you should not either. Masks are a much better way to do the same thing that the eraser tool does, and we'll get into that in just a second. But for now, just in, in order to demonstrate the concept of layers, I'm going to take the eraser tool, and it's really kind of large. Let me get rid of that drop down list. And I'm going to erase the left portion of the yellow layer. And then, of course, watch what happens. Now, it's very easy to project that. When we erase part of the top, we'll be able to see part of the bottom. And you can see here in this little thumbnail image that we've erased part of the top layer, revealing what's on the bottom layer. Pretty simple concept, right? All right, let's back up. Or no, let's, let's just stay with this. Let's, let's don't back up. Let's just stay with this. Now, in order to explain masks, I'm going to have you do a very, very simple thing. Let's look at this image right here. And lo and behold, there's the Lone Ranger. Now, why are we using the Lone Ranger? The Lone Ranger has on a mask. Now, if we cut holes in the middle of the mask, 
you can see the Lone Ranger's eyes. So it's the concept of what's covering his face has partially been revealed by cutting out holes in places where we want to see what's behind the mask, or in the case of layers, underneath the mask, okay? So let's go on that analogy. I'm going to come down here, click on this, and now we have a mask. Now I'll get the brush. Here's the brush. I want the flow to be 100% on this particular example. We've got a black color. So we have a white mask. If I paint black over it, then it will erase that part of the mask that will reveal the blue color beneath it. So all I got to do is click once, click twice, and we've erased two holes on the mask to reveal what's underneath the mask. Now this does the exact same thing to this point as the eraser tool. The problem with the eraser tool is that you can't go back. You can only go one direction. Once you've erased something, you can't put it back. However, with a mask, you can by simply changing the color of the brush. And if I put white back up there, we can simply color over the blue, or the mask as it were, to cover up the two holes that revealed the blue below. And that's really all there is to it. Now there's of course refinements. You can change the flow to gradually reveal what's below the top layer. In fact, let's go ahead and just do that. We'll set this flow down to 5%, which will be a very common setting for you. And then we'll go ahead and return the brush color to black. And I'll reduce the size of the brush with the left bracket key. And then we simply paint over and you can see that as we go back and forth over that one spot, the blue is revealing more and more intensely. Come over here and do this, or we can run this all the way to 100%. Click on it and turn around, and we can reveal what's below with a mask. Now, if we mess it up, same thing as before. Command Z, and we're back to normal. And that's it. Masks, very simple. Layers, very simple. Now, you can stack layers 10 deep if you want to. You can have a mask on every layer if you want to. Sometimes processing gets very, very complicated if you want it to, and it's there for you if you want to do it. But the point is, you have the flexibility to do just about anything you want to an image by using layers and masks and mastering the five tools that we talked about previously in this toolbar. So one more time, you can come in, play around, you can't hurt anything, and as we have repeated, if you get stuck, you can go back on your history states or hit Command or Control Z. And it's all available to you in Photoshop.